We're in Italy. What happens in Italy? There was gladiators. Like a gladiator, tonight, we must lay it all on the line. Everybody got it? We need to honor the people watching the same way that the gladiators honored their audience. Do we have that? Family, let's go! Do it for the gladiators! You know, for me managing stress, I think there's like stress in season and stress out of season. So the stress in season is um, very, very selfishly, I'm gonna work out for two hours every day. Um, and it's non-negotiable, doesn't matter if I have a million meetings. Um, you know, I'm not trying to beat anyone in the office. Um, I'm gonna work out, you know, after, you know, I wake up, I'm going to go work out every single day. If it's a travel day, I don't wake up and say, I'm tired, I'm going to take off today. Um, I just don't take off. I haven't taken off for, I don't know how, you know, probably 20 years. I want something new every day at practice. And, and um, I've never done it before, but like we're trying to teach lateral foot speed defensively by using tapes of video clips of tennis players going sideline to sideline where um, when we talk about pre precision on our uh, spacing and cutting um, we're showing wide receiver clips and the precision of, of a wide receiver planting a foot and doing a down and out or a down and in or a hook pattern showing short stops um, in a defensive stance before the pitch is thrown off the pitcher's mound and then showing shortstop's reaction to a ball coming off a bat at, at, a, at an incredible speed. Um, so reaction time, precision on cutting, um, lateral quickness or lateral foot speed. Uh, like we have a think tank every day. And most of the time, um, I don't bring in our three assistant coaches. I bring in all the younger guys on staff. Most of the guys are under the age of 35. And I'll just throw out an idea, like whether it be social media, and I'll just want them to come up with, like who in this room can come up with five creative ideas off this one thought process. Um, and so I think like every single day, uh, giving your team something that they've never known, uh, as a coaching staff coming up with new terminology. Uh, my mom said, uh, when I was working at, for a certain coach, she said, have you learned his system? And I said, yes. And she goes, move on, go learn from someone else. And I think most people's advice to young coaches is, you know, stay where you are, keep working. My mom was always, as soon as you've learned what you need to learn, move on. I did want to reinvent or recreate who I was after I got fired from Sacramento Kings. Um, I had two opportunities a head coach at the NBA level, Sacramento and Golden State. I had done enough research that you don't usually get a third chance unless you go back and you're an assistant for four, four to five years. And I did not want to do that. I wanted to be a head coach. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go back to the minor leagues. Even though I've been a two-time NBA head coach, I don't need to stay at the Ritz-Carlton. Um, I don't need to eat shrimp and lobster on the team plane. I'm cool riding a bus from Reno to Bakersfield. Um, so after getting fired from the Kings, I did the Dominican Republic. Um, we had practices basically outside or in practice gyms that had no roof. And, um, you know, if it was windy out, it would affect your jump shot. And um, there might be cockroaches going across the floor before we practiced. And uh, Venezuela, we dealt with some, some you know, circumstances that aren't, aren't what you'd see in the NBA. Yeah. Um, but then when I didn't get that call up, um, after doing two national team head coaching, after the Reno D-League of, of, of having great teams and having a lot of call ups from Jeremy Lin to Hassan Whiteside to Steve Novak, um, and then going to the Lakers G-League team, um, and, and shattering all G League records, um, I decided those those four stints did not get me back as a head coach that I was going to go to college. And I knew what I didn't know. 
So I, it was a very humbling experience to be an assistant coach at the collegiate level and not, not the top assistant either. Um, other people having the associate head coach title, kind of starting at the very bottom, third assistant coach. Um, and I did that and, you know, because of that, I kind of, you know, got my way back to a head job at Nevada. I went from an old school thought, people thought, even when I was 35, or 37 when I was coaching the Warriors. He's old school, he's intense, he doesn't have fun, he's really serious, he's extremely demanding. Well now we have a lot of young coaches in college basketball that think that I'm nothing but a guy that um, does stuff on social media. Um, I'm putting on a game uniform and doing recruiting pictures where the recruits Allen Iverson and I'm Ty Lu, and the recruits stepping over me after a big <laughs> shot. Um, so I went from too serious as a young coach to now an older coach who people question, is this guy an X and O guy or is this guy just a clown on social media? Mm -hmm. But now that I'm 55, you know, I don't really care. Like my career is what it is. And so the truth of the matter is my mom was behind that philosophy um, I thought it was great advice.